This channel is supported by my books, including my new book, Fishing the Edge, Techniques and Tales from Surf, Boat, and Kayak. And you can learn more about the book at johnskinnerfishing.com and on Amazon. Okay, I'm just lining myself up over some bottom structure to go black fishing. Uh, I'm just motoring up with the trolling motor and looking for that prime big high rock. And here it comes on the fish finder. There it is. And I'm going to push the um, spot lock button and the motor is going to lock me in. But why am I holding an Alby rod? Uh, yeah, well, I'm going to go black fishing here, but I'm like on Alby Highway and... Uh, yeah, so this is going to have uh, a lot of a lot of action going both ways. Going to fish for blackfish, but hey, when the albies come by, we got to make some casts. All right, I have links to all of the gear in the video description, and if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. All right, yeah, I'm blackfishing. However, I just saw albies, so going to grab the other rod. You gotta be a fight in this current though. The rod feels good. So prototypes, if I don't like it, I can fix it. Come on. Yeah, and this is uh, going to be a seven-foot dark matter skinner rod that will probably be out in the 2023 season by the beginning of the season. But uh, got to do some testing with it first. And hey, Albie's great fish to test a rod. And once you pop an Alpi's head out of the water, it pretty much shuts it down. There you go. All right, let's do some black fishing. Uh, one thing I want to point out, a lot of people ask me, well, how can you fish such light weight uh, when I always need to fish, you know, six, eight ounces or something? And, of course, the main answer is often that they're using line that's too heavy. I use 15-pound braid. If you use thicker line, it catches the current, and that's a problem. But the other thing is, you step point ahead of me? All right, so that's important. Um, you know, I pick areas that are out of the current. Now, right now, this current's running kind of fast. I have to use an ounce and a half jig, which is definitely heavier than I like to use. Um, but what's going to happen, yeah, this is an outgoing Finally. current. As this current accelerates this water is going to slow down and that's because um, that point actually deflects it and builds an eddy in this area and this is how I'm able to fish lighter jigs you got to know the area that you're fishing and some areas like right now where I like to fish the most it's just really kind of fast I don't like it but in this area here um, because of that point it's going to break the current, but the current needs to be running pretty hard for it to break it and eddy it around. But all right, ounce and a half, but you'll see as we go along, uh, I'm going to be able to drop down to three quarters of an ounce in the middle of the tide. This is only the beginning of the tide, maybe one hour into uh, outgoing. And around the middle of the tide, it's going to be like dead in here because that point up there is going to deflect that current out. This area is going to be dead. Great for fishing. And by dead, I don't mean no current at all. I just mean really light current. You could fish half or three quarter ounce jig. Come 
finally. So once I'm where I want to be, I turn off my fish finder. Um, you know, it saves battery, obviously, but the other thing is, I, I don't think it can help having the sonar banging down there. Um, maybe it has no impact at all? I don't know. All right, I see Albies. Okay, this cast, come on. They're on bait that's so small it's like invisible and uh, yeah <laughs> they're picky So I'm narrating this video on November 15th, and today, the day I narrated, I saw Albies caught on the beach and in the boat. They are really staying late this year. One part out of them though. All right, let's go back to something that actually wants to hit. And uh, yeah, now I've got an orange jig on. I had the, the heavier green one on before. Not that the color matters, but it just tells me that I have now switched from the ounce and a half down to the three quarter ounce. And uh, you'll be seeing that, um, you know, my line's not going to be blown out behind the boat or anything. It's going to be pretty much straight up and down three quarters of an ounce, despite the fact that this is now like mid current. That buoy is just like sitting there. Um, so, th you know, that's what it's about. If you want to find good jigging areas, you got to understand the current flow in the area. And even though the current is ripping farther out, it's pretty quiet in here. There we go. He was moving with it. Just 
small keepers though, not, not any big ones. Definitely a keeper though. Yeah, and I'm going to keep this one. Uh, this one for the table. Maybe, no, I'm going to keep two fish today, and uh, this is one of them. Going to just make sure, and yeah, he, he's fine. He's more than an inch over. Hey, this is a long shot, but I found a tackle box floating in the wash. You know, one of those uh, clear plastic things that you might take out in a kayak. It's got like a dozen lures in it. If you lost it, um, describe its contents, uh, leave a comment, describe its contents, it matches up. Uh, somehow I will figure out a way to get it back to you. Boy, I thought they would never hit when they were porpoising like that. Mm, the trolling motor sticking down there. And that's a number one deadly dick that I'm throwing at the Albies. That one didn't, uh, Stop the line didn't stop going out because something grabbed it while it was falling. You know, there's there's a lot of small keepers, but it is so hard to get anything. I'm finding it hard to get anything. Uh, certainly six or better. Today I'm not even getting five. So this is Eastern Long Island Sound. This is still outgoing tide, which means the main current in the sound is running west to east. However, in this place, the current is running east to west. The eddy has set up, but it's a nice gentle one. Very good for jig fishing. Here he is. Ah, you just feel him swimming. I got the mother load of Albies over there.
So I've done a terrible job building the blackfish bite because I keep uh, interrupting the blackfishing to cast for albies. And yeah, since I'm by myself, when I'm playing around with albies, uh, I don't have a crab bait down there, so the blackfish uh, almost certainly disperse. But uh, that's okay. Uh, there's no way I can pass up albies going by on the surface. So yeah, that's to the species list, huh? Yeah, and that tasty sea bass is going to find its way into the cooler. Freaking Albies right under the boat. Right in a big school, come on. Ha huh. <laughs> that was a good guess. Do it again. That was almost as good as hooking up. Yeah, what a great day on the water. You sit basically in the same spot and have both of these species there. Uh, just great. Yeah, we could have done better on the blackfish, but I, I know that was because I kept uh, stopping to cast for these albies. But, yeah, they, I, I find them pretty hard to resist. So, all right, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. And check out my new book, Fishing the Edge, Techniques and Tales from Surfboat and Kayak at johnskinnerfishing.com and on Amazon.